The Ukrainian parliament has voted to give special status to some of the defiant eastern regions of the country. Let's get more now live with Arti's Roman Kosarev joining us here on the program. Roman, good to see you. Uh, what does all of this mean in practice? Right. Uh, the special status was uh, awarded to the Donetsk and Lugansk regions here in the east of Ukraine by the Ukrainian parliament. Uh, this was offered by President Pyotr Poroshenko uh, a, a little uh, earlier. However, this uh, uh, self-administration will last for uh, three years. Still unclear what will happen uh, after that. Now, uh, along with this bill, an amnesty uh, law was also implemented for the uh, for all the people that uh, participated uh, in the crisis here in the east of uh, Ukraine and also according uh, to the documents uh, early elections will be held here in the east of Ukraine on the 7th of December local uh, elections right here now leaders of the uh, more radical pro western uh, parties uh, have already expressed their outrage that uh, this bill said that they did not vote for it uh, at all uh, now the special uh, status and uh, along with the ceasefire um, were uh, talked about uh, were implemented in the Minsk uh, protocol uh, by the parties uh, more than uh, a week ago. Uh, now, the truce uh, here uh, is being largely observed. It's been holding for about uh, 11 uh, days or so, uh, even though it's uh, sometimes uh, marred by uh, sporadic fighting. And uh, we still hear about uh, civilians uh, dying as a result of uh, shelling. But uh, largely, uh, the fact what took place today in Kiev, uh, perhaps uh, it would lead uh, to an end uh, to violence here in the east of Ukraine. And uh, we already see uh, some uh, something like that in the refugees uh, returning uh, back home from Russia. All right, RT's Roman Kosarev there in Donetsk. Thank you. But for now, it's RT International and straight back to our breaking news story for this hour. A Ukraine's parliament has approved special status for the defiant eastern regions of the country. The bill promises early local elections, an amnesty as well for those who took part in the conflict with Kiev. Let's discuss it further now and talk to political analyst Alexander Pavic, now joining us live here on RT International. Good to see you today, sir. The ceasefire is acknowledged to be more or less holding. The Minsk agreement seems to be gradually getting implemented. Uh, some are already thinking, is it possible we could see the end of the conflict in sight? Well, I think this is uh, one thing we'll just have to wait and see. This is a good first step, but we must remember some things. This is the same parliament that earlier in the year practically uh, banned the Russian language from being a, an official language in Ukraine. This is the same parliament who is now reinstating it. So what happened in the meantime? In the meantime, they tried to suppress it by force. And when they couldn't get it done, when they couldn't suppress the Russian speaking population, drive it out of Ukraine if possible, now they're ready for compromise. But OK, still, it's good that a step has been taken in that direction. But, However, I mean, as, as you say, I'm so, sorry to jump in here, Alexander, but, yeah. but you, you mentioned the word compromise here. Uh, Ukraine's yeah. president has said there will be no federalization and Donetsk and Lugansk regions will, will remain part of Ukraine. So, so how can you actually read into the spe special status then? It seems that we're getting conflicting statements out of Kiev. Well, this is the thing. Uh, this is uh, a step. I, I said a step. You're absolutely right. It's a step in that direction. It's a compromise uh, uh, compared to what this same parliament did in February and March. And it's a direct result of the resistance that was formed, organized in reaction to what they were doing, what Kiev was doing earlier in the year. Uh, the, Minsk, the Minsk agreement, we must remember. Uh, the uh, Donbas, uh, the representatives of Donbas, Lugansk and Donetsk, are now a party to the conflict. They were signatories to this agreement. So we need to hear what they have to say about this. And it's not just on Kiev anymore. And I think official Russia said the other day, this is something that has to be worked out between Kiev and Donbas. So we need to hear from the other side. Also, you're absolutely right. Uh, there are conflicting s signals coming from Kiev. Uh, Mr. Poroshenko said the other day, well, uh, special status is something that will last for only three years. Now, that's a mixed signal, to say the least. It's also a bit disingenuous. I think if anyone in Donetsk and Lugansk hears this is something for only three years, 
I don't think, you know, I'll, I think they'll say, well, this is not a serious offer. So it may be that this is only an offer for the public, for the public in Ukraine, which is unhappy with the war, for the Western public to give uh, Kiev some sort of a connotation of being peacemakers. But we'll see what their deeds are. So far, it's not very encouraging, even though the, the ceasefire, as I say, is holding. But I think it's only because Kiev hasn't recovered from the... Uh, vast military losses that they've suffered in the last month. Yeah, that's what many people have been saying. A lot of analysts saying that Kiev only moved towards the truce in eastern Ukraine because it was losing very, very badly. Uh, parliament members have ruled out any possible alliance or association with self-proclaimed eastern leaders. Do you, do you think that means the regions w could remain ostracized despite any official special status? Well, absolutely. Uh, how can you not talk to the people who now clearly represent the population of uh, uh, Donbas, so both Donetsk and Lugansk? If you do that, then in advance, you're practically uh, uh, eliminating any chance for real peace and real talks. So once again, uh, when you look at this a little bit more closely, it looks more like posturing by Kiev than anything else. However, Diplomacy, public diplomacy is also a game. This is part of the game. So we have to see and we, uh, we have to wait and see what the official response from Donbass, from the legitimate representatives of Donbass will be. We haven't heard it yet, I don't think. All right, early days yet. Political analyst Alexander Rapavich joining us live here on RT International. Many thanks for your time today.